Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator, and uh, for something a little bit different for this channel, uh, we're going to talk relatively briefly about um, the rifle, Enfield rifled musket of the middle of the 19th century. The, it became the regulation British um, rifle of the British Army. Uh, from 1853 onwards and uh, so it's the 1853 pattern Enfield. It is a muzzle loader. It is percussion lock. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, and it really was a game changer. Um, it probably made its first um, sort of relatively wide, wide scale foray into um, into combat, as it were, during the Crimean War and a couple of years later in the uh, Indian Mutiny. And it was a game changer in both of those wars. Now, it wasn't the first rifle by any stretch that was used in the British military. Going all the way back, you've got the Baker rifle, the Brunswick rifle, you've got the Mini uh, rifle. So there, there had been rifles used, but the uh, Pattern 1853 was the first rifled musket. That's a bit of a confusing term. I might speak about that in a second, uh, but it was the first rifle, should we say. It was the first rifle that basically was universal for the British Army. And it was around this time in the middle of the 19th century when not just the British, but uh, many other major powers, the French and, and um, the Prussians and so on, were adopting rifles. Now, ironically, as rifles were becoming pretty much universal in Europe, uh, it was only it was around that time and only a little bit afterwards in Britain it was 1863 um, that they started developing these into breech loaders and um, some countries in fact were far ahead of uh, certainly ahead of Britain in terms of introducing breech loaders. Um, What's a breech loader and what's a muzzle loader? It's very, very simple. I'm sure most of you already know. A muzzle loader means you pour everything down the front end of the gun. You put the powder, you put the wadding, you put the ball, you put some kind of patch over the top usually, um, but maybe not. Um, but you put everything down the front. So it's sometimes known colloquially as a front stuffer. Um, so you put everything down your nozzle, as it were, and that's where it comes out of again. Now that's got a couple of um, disadvantages. Obviously that was the standard way of loading firearms for hundreds of years until breech loaders came along. Now on that, breech loaders had actually existed way back in the 15th century. So if you look at uh, even kind of Hundred Years' War, Wars of the Roses um, artillery, you do find some of them have lift out breeches. And in fact, if you go, if you look at the Mary Rose, for example, if you look at naval ships in the 16th century, um, you'd find also breech loaders alongside muzzle loaders there. But fundamentally, uh, there are certain risks inherent when your engineering is not up to the kind of mid 19th century standard, when you're in the 15th or 16th century, in other words, there are certain risks to having a breech loaded gun, but there are also certain advantages. Now, the main disadvantages uh, of having a muzzle loading gun is it means that everything has to go down here, but it also comes out of here. And um, because um, black powder and the things associated with the wadding and everything else are quite messy and quite mucky, what you get is so-called fouling. And you get a buildup of gunk, essentially, in your barrel. And every time you load it, it becomes progress progressively harder. Um, um, and in fact, when you have a rifle like this, you have rifling inside the barrel, okay? A smoothbore, which we're going to look at in a second. A smoothbore is just a tube, but a rifled gun has a twisted, in various different ways, there were different ways of rifling, um, but generally speaking, has a, a twisted form inside the barrel that gives spin to the bullet which makes it a more accurate and a flatter trajectory and therefore longer range. Um, it makes it uh, foul, it makes it build up with this gunk from shooting the muzzle loader. The advantage, therefore, with a breech loader is whilst everything is being shot out of this end, you're loading it at the back end and you're not having to ram everything down past all that gunk to load your gun. The other advantage, of course, is in combat, as well as rate of fire, so speed of loading, because you're not having to ram everything down here in order to then shoot it again, you can just stick th things in the back fire, stick thing in the back, fire. Um, 
The advantage, of course, is you don't have to keep navigating to the front end of the weapon or the top end of the weapon and standing there and taking a ramrod out and doing all of this loading procedure. So a lot of people ask, oh, why did Napoleonic armies stand in lines and shoot at each other? Because they got to, to reload and use their muskets with any kind of decent rate of fire. You could lie on the floor, but trying to reload one of these lying on the floor is very, very difficult. Once you start to get breech loaders, it's now much more easy to reload your gun in all sorts of different positions, lying on the ground, kneeling down, um, keeping the muzzle stuck out of a, some kind of defensive work, out of a you know, firing slot or firing uh, port or something like this. So being able to breech load your gun, as well as um, increasing your rate of fire for numerous reasons, some of which I've just mentioned, it also uh, increases your options for how you can use that firearm. Um, even from the point of if you've got your bayonet on the end and you're warding off cavalry, it means that you can keep your bayonet pointed towards the enemy, open up your breech, get a round out, stuff another round in, close it, prime and shoot whilst keeping your bayonet pointed towards the enemy. It means that you don't need to start doing all of this, which makes your weapon useless in close combat whilst you're reloading it. So to a certain extent, it makes, um, it, makes it easier to protect yourself from people trying to close to, uh, uh, kind of close combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. Now, the, rifled, uh, the rifle was, uh, if we just ignore breech loading for now, okay, that's a topic for another video, although I've just talked about it quite a lot. Um, if we look at the rifling of this, so when you have a rifled barrel, there are a few things, especially with the muzzle loader, that make it um, quite difficult to make it work well, okay? And the rifling, as I mentioned, can get fouled up, clogged up which can make it slower and harder to load. And at some point, we even know that for loading, they had very, obviously, a, you want a tight-fitting bullet that will bite into the rifling and give it that spin for the benefit of rifling. Um, so you need a very tight fit. And we even know that sometimes they use mallets and things like this to, to hammer down the bullet into the barrel. And this is very slow. It's slow and difficult, especially under pressure of combat. So what became, what came before the rifled uh, arm and what most armies were still using actually around the world in 1850 were smoothbores. Okay, now what this is, is this is an East India Company Type F or Model F um, musket uh, as used by sepoys. Um, this was the standard uh, kind of weapon, the standard main weapon of Indian troops during the Indian Mutiny, for example. So whilst famously during that war, a lot of British soldiers had their Patton 53 rifles, although it should be pointed out that not everyone uh, in the British military had these yet. Some people were using, still using the old smoothbore 1842 Patton muskets, which are quite similar to this. Um, but uh, British forces had these rifles and it gave them a tremendous advantage. Um, why? Well, quite simply, the rifle, the Patton 53 rifle, can shoot relatively accurately. That is, you can place bullets into the area of the enemy, even hitting individuals if you're a good marksman, up to about a thousand yards. Now, <laughs> with iron sights at a thousand yards, I shoot. Um, I've got an SMLE. I've got. Um, I've got this, and uh, you know, I. I, I couldn't personally contemplate hitting an individual with iron sights at a thousand yards. It is a very, very great achievement. But it did happen in battle. Uh, it did have, there were certainly um, examples from the siege of Sebastopol in um, the Crimean War, so 1854-5ish, uh, um, where Russians up on the defences were shot by Enfield rifles at, I think, about five, six hundred yards, uh, which, uh, you know, with iron sights is is with open sights is is quite an achievement especially when probably half of their body was behind a defense you simply cannot do that with a smoothbore musket now before i go on on that tack i do want to say that these are not as inaccurate as some people make out so you will find some people on the internet or even in documentaries saying that with a smoothbore musket you can't hit a barn door at 100 yards that's complete BS, okay? So um, I've, I've shot smoothbore muskets many times. It's not something I shoot regularly, but I have shot many times, and I had absolutely no problem whatsoever um, putting balls repeatedly from a musket like this, putting balls repeatedly through a chest-sized target at 100 yards. 
not really a problem, okay? It was actually 80 yards in fairness. It was 80 yards, not 100. But at, uh, at 80 yards, it was not a problem at all to put lots of holes through a person-sized target with a smoothbore musket. Assuming that you've got the right ball, you've got, you know, your known uh, load of powder and this kind of stuff. And you have to remember that to a certain extent in combat, uh, there were some unknowns. Sometimes the musket balls didn't fit very well in the barrels. You were reliant on government uh, issued ammunition, in other words. Um, so the powder might not always be the best quality. It might be varied between different cartridges. So there were variable um, uh, aspects to what you were using. And there was obviously shooting under pressure is very different to shooting on a range when you're relaxed. Um, that being said, you can comfortably hit people at 100 yards or further with a smoothbore musket. However, the difference between reliable accuracy at 100 or even 150 yards with a smoothbore musket compared to reliable accuracy up to 500 yards or more, theoretically on a range up to 1,000 yards or even 1,200 yards with a rifle. And these are weapons of the same period. This is uh, an 1856 dated Enfield. This is an East India Company marked uh, type or Model F, which probably dates to about 1850. So this is 1850, this is 1856. And these could very likely have been used against each other. It is entirely possible that that was used by um, Indian, uh, whatever you want to call them, rebels, freedom fighters in the 57-58 war, commonly known as the Indian Mutiny. It's entirely possible that that was used there. And it's extremely likely that this was used at the Siege of Delhi during the Indian Mutiny um, because it was uh, carried, it's marked to the Oxfordshire Light Infantry who were at Delhi and it's an 1856 made rifle. So these could have been used against each other and you really mustn't underestimate what a big advantage it is to be able to accurately shoot at people hundreds of yards away with one of these as opposed to only being able to shoot at them accurately at 100 yards or maybe 200 yards if you're extremely lucky with a bigger trajectory and therefore not travelling in such a straight line, I'll talk about that in a second, with the smoothbore musket. So that brings me on to the point I just raised. The other issue is not just about accuracy. It's also about trajectory now, uh, and it's also about bullet size. So this uses a larger bullet than the Enfield rifle. The Enfield rifle uses a 5.77, 0.577 of an inch, and this uses 0.75 of an inch. So this is a bigger musket ball. So ironically, um, that's moving at higher velocity. This is moving at slower velocity, but is a bigger ball. It's entirely possible that at close range, maybe 50 yards, if you're fighting in a built up area or forest or whatever or trenches it's entirely possible that actually the smoothbore musket whilst it's also probably debatably slightly faster to load and less likely to jam, um, get clogged up it also potentially does more damage to people at closer range okay despite still being relatively long range relatively accurate weapon um, but uh, there is an issue of trajectory here so over let's say 100 yards, so if your enemy is at 100 yards shooting with this, the arc of the bullet will be, let's say it's like that, okay? Whereas the rifle, the arc of the bullet will be flatter. It will be a flatter trajectory. It's a faster traveling bullet and it's rifled. And it's a lighter bullet as well, it's smaller. Okay, so the trajectory of the bullet is lower. That means that um, if you're aiming to hit someone at 100 yards and you overshoot or undershoot, it is more likely you will go over their head or plow into the ground. If you have a flatter trajectory, it is more likely that if you aim a bit too high or a bit too low, you will hit them in the face or hit them in the kneecap um, because the trajectory of your bullet is a lower trajectory or flatter trajectory. Um, additionally, you have to bear in mind that bullets often pass through people, especially when you're talking about large bullets like these. Um, and if they're in several ranks, so if you have a bunch of the enemy who are maybe two or three or four deep, or there's a group of them, if your bullet has a flatter trajectory, it will go through the first person's chest and hit the second person's groin. If your bullet has a higher trajectory, it might go through the first person's head and then drop into the ground at the feet of the second person, or it might hit them in the shins. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying, that essentially a flatter trajectory is better for reliably being able to hit a, essentially an oblong human target, 
and a flatter trajectory is better for passing through the first target in a mortally wounding area and having a similar wounding effect on the second or even the third person. So there we go. Um, really just to conclude uh, that the, uh, in the 1850s um, the, the widespread introduction of rifles for the majority of troops in the British and other European armies really created a huge weapon advantage over those who were still using smoothbore muskets. And you have to remember that a lot of people in the world were still using smoothbore muzzle-loading muskets well into the late part of the 19th century, okay, so into the 50s and 60s and even 70s. Um, it was very, very common to still have smoothbore muzzle-loaded muskets when other people were using rifled and after 1860s breech-loading rifles. So a very, very asymmetrical balance of power, um, even though they both on the surface of it look like similar weapons to modern people, they're actually hugely different in their potential in warfare. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Give us a like and a subscribe if you haven't done already and uh, cheers for watching the channel. I'll see you soon for another history or weapon based video. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.